What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. We got multiple different things to talk about here today. Uh, first, we'll start with the student loan forgiveness program that is ten to twenty thousand dollars in the latest stimulus program that was signed by President Biden through an executive order that's going to help about forty three million people. Uh, Republicans are thinking about challenging that in a court of law. Um, there's some crazy news going on about this. Also, I want to talk about how you can get up to $14,000. Uh, we'll talk about to the details in that about that in this video. So make sure to watch all the way to the end. I'll give you all the details. We got a lot to talk about in this video. Democratic Representative Ilhan Omar calls Republican Senator Ted Cruz from Texas, who says he's going to challenge it in a court of law, she calls him, quote, a miserable little weasel for attempting to overturn Biden's student loan forgiveness program in court, which is going to help about 43 million people with student loan forgiveness. The problem with student loans is that Many people pay on them for decades and decades and decades with the average cost of college now being twenty-five dollars to $50,000 per year in some cases. Uh, she calls him a miserable little weasel. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this. On Tuesday, Republican Senator Ted Cruz of Texas told the Washington Post that he's been working with a top Supreme Court litigator to determine who's the best plaintiff would be to overturn it. Yikes. After word got out that Ted Cruz is brainstorming ways to block Biden's relief, Omar wrote on Twitter that she's not at all concerned with the questions of legality surrounding the debt cancellation. She wrote, quote, what a miserable little weasel. No wonder they call him Lucifer in the flesh, Omar wrote. Fortunately, student debt cancellation is legally sound and should withstand legal scrutiny. Set your alerts for the application in October if you qualify for relief and file before the end of December. I will keep you up to date on all those details as I watch this stuff every single day. So stay tuned to my YouTube channel here. Make sure you're subscribed with the bell icon. Cruz, it's completely free. Cruz has acknowledged previously in his podcast that suing the administration over student loan forgiveness would be difficult. He says, quote, the difficulty here is finding a plaintiff who the courts will conclude has standing that may prove a real challenge, he said. So basically, he's going to look for one very specific person that the, the Supreme Court might say, yeah, we can overturn it because of one per specific person's circumstances or something. So that could overturn this for 43 million Americans. And, and this is a dangerous precedent because what about the next program that's going to help people? Like there's supposed to be a food stamp, food snap assistant uh, potential raise here this month in September. Will that get overturned? Will that be challenged in a court of law? That's for like 40 million Americans. Um, when they announce that, if that gets raised or if the eligibility gets lowered for that, will that get challenged in a court of law? Will we see that also get challenged? What if there's another stimulus check on the federal level? Will that get challenged as well? Will we redact that? What if we see um, another unemployment bonus or another paycheck protection program? Will that get challenged? What if we see more rent assistance, mortgage assistance, utility assistance? Will that get challenged? Uh, you know, it's it's totally okay, though, when large corporations get to pay zero dollars in taxes, billion dollar corporations uh, get to pay zero dollars in taxes and they get corporate welfare um, and they're they 
you know, like Amazon made $11.2 billion in, in profit one year and paid $0 in taxes. They get government handouts. They get tax subsidies. That's perfectly okay. And billionaires get to pay sometimes $0 in taxes as well. And a lot of these corporations get to actually refunds from the government. That's okay, though. It, but when it comes to like, remember, 87% of the student loan forgiveness is going to be for people making under $75,000. So when it comes to stuff to help out the common average everyday man, now we want to challenge it? And I'm not even going to take advantage of this. We actually already paid off our student loans, okay? So I'm just advocating for the average everyday people that need help here because the problem is is that these student loans are just, they're nasty. People go on to pay on them for years and years. If you've read the stories in the comments, um, I'm the typical person that, you know, we my wife's got a full degree. I went to college for a little bit of time here. We paid off my wife's co uh, full-blown college degree here. I'm the typical person that, like, should be mad at the world because we paid off my wife's degree. I'm not mad. I'm happy for my fellow neighbors my fellow man, my fellow brethren that are getting help. That's how we should be thinking. We shouldn't be mad when people that get help, that people that need help get help. Because if they didn't need help, they would have paid it off, right? I mean, the problem with student loans is, and, and I'll show you this, I love showing this because it's so true. This is the problem with, with student loans. This guy from a few months ago, you know, I, I seen this. I still have it on my desktop. It's just gotten saved here. Um, he says, I'm 27 years old. I have $120,000 in student loan debt from an undergraduate degree, not even from a master's or anything. Okay. This is, how, I mean, schools are expensive. They're twenty-five dollars to $50,000 per year. He's been paying almost $1,000 a month, $970 a month, every single month for five years. He's paid almost $60,000 already in five years. And in that time, only $2,000 of that has gone towards the principal. This is one of the massive problems with these loans. $58,000 roughly has gone towards interest. And only $2,000 has gone towards the loan, has gone towards the principal. He asks, how is this even legal? This is one of the major, major problems. So, I mean, you, you can see the problem here is, and this guy's paying almost $12,000 a year, guys. $12,000 a year. $58,000 has gone toward interest. $2,000 has gone toward principal. It's not like he's not paying on it. And I've seen another comment that we've kind of made famous here on our YouTube channel. Um, you know, one of our viewers said their mother is, is a nurse, 69 years old, has been serving the public for many, many years, and she's still paying on her student loans. She's 69 years old, has been a public servant for many, many years, and still has student loans. Been paying on them for decades. This is the problem is that the average everyday person, people like nurses, people like teachers, you know, the, the average people that, that live, breathe, and die in our communities, literally some of them die with their student loans because of how long it takes to pay them off. The interest is just constantly eating away at their finances for years and years and years and years. And finally, we, we get some help. And again, I'm not even getting the help. I'm advocating for you guys. Um, and, and now... Rich politicians want to challenge it and take it away. Let me know your thoughts on this. And again, I think there should be more programs like this. The food stamp, food snap assistance program that's going to be coming this month. We need that too. We need more assistance for low income people. Another a stimulus check for low income people. We've had three so far. OK, um, you look at programs like this, it's not programs. And again, 87 percent of the student loan forgiveness is going to um, people that make under seventy five thousand. Um, it can go up to one hundred twenty five thousand. I don't know why they picked those income limits. That's what they did. Um, in some cases, you know, you live in like high cost of living 
areas like New York and, um, you know, you know, San Francisco and stuff like that. You know, it's very expensive to live in some places, but 87% of people making under $75,000 are the people that are getting this. Okay. So th these are like low and middle income people that are getting this relief. And here's the thing is if, if this does get struck down, who's to say that the next program won't get struck down? The next program that's for low income and middle income, the next program that's food assistance, the next program that's rent assistance, the next program that's mortgage assistance. This is the this is the problem with this precedence, okay? Remember that that executive order that Trump did in 2020, right before the election, which sent up uh, billions of dollars to unemployed Americans, uh, he did an executive order that took money from the Disaster Relief Fund, which was money that was already approved by Congress. And he did an executive order and sent out six checks, stimulus checks, unemployed bonus checks, whatever you want to call it. And he sent it out to millions of people. He sent out billions of dollars and they were stimulus checks, they were whatever you want to call them. And they were people to, to people who lost their jobs. I didn't benefit from it. You may not have benefited from it. But again, I said the same thing. I said, you know what? The Democrats should not challenge that. These are people who need help right now. These are people who lost their jobs very recently. This, these checks will help them get through their tough times until they get back on their feet. And I think it would be a mistake for the Democrats to challenge this. One, because it's before an election. But more importantly, that this is help that people need. And the Democrats didn't challenge this. And... It, it stuck. It held up. Now, whether it would have been struck down in a court of law, if they would have challenged it, we don't know. But that did actually kind of set a precedence because a former president, or at that time a current president, did an executive order and sent out this money. It's a little different this time because in this student loans, they're not actually sending out money per se because... The, the the student loan forgiveness really just gets wiped off the books, okay? Um, they just reduce your debt, or in some cases they cancel your debt. If you have less than ten thousand, you might just get a, your 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 loan canceled. Um, but even if this program doesn't help you, I mean, it literally says in the Bible, you know, be thankful for your neighbor. Don't let jealousy fill your heart. You know those type of things. And you also got to remember, what about the next program? Do we want the next program to be canceled? What if the next program is a stimulus check for low Americans, low income Americans? Do we want that to be challenged? What if the next program is rent assistance, mortgage assistance, utility assistance, state stimulus checks, SNAP assistance, food assistance, paycheck protection program, unemployment assistance? I mean, look at all these different programs that we've had, and none of them have been challenged and struck down. I mean, we've, we've, we, if, if we start doing that, what kind of precedence do we set that we say, okay, we want to help people. I mean, look at all the money they, they've spent on corporations here. We just spent $250 billion on the chips bill. That was That's going to go to large corporations like Intel and NVIDIA, corporations that already make billions and billions and billions of dollars. This is going to cost around $300 billion, and this is going to go out to people. Which one would you rather have, helping people or helping large corporations like Intel that already make billions and billions of dollars and basically were just writing a blank check and giving them more money? So people that are struggling to pay their student loans and don't even have enough money to pay their student loans or corporations like Intel that already have tens of billions of dollars in their checking account, and now we're going to give them more billions of dollars. You let me know your thoughts here. <laughs> so, um, and remember that the next program is SNAP and food assistance. That's, again, low-income people. That's coming this month. By the way, I just looked up the dates for that. It looks like that is September 28th. White House sets hunger conference for September 28th, plans national strategy. 
So hopefully we will see uh, some major upgrades and changes to the SNAP program, food assistance program. Maybe we'll have to see what happens with that September 28th. I'll keep you up to date on that. Next up, I want to talk about, you can see here, millions of Americans can receive up to $14,000 for their home, but you have to act now. Here's the details of this. Millions of Americans must act now to be eligible to receive up to $14,000 for their home due to energy-efficient home upgrades. Biden's, President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act calls for several ways Americans can benefit and lower their energy costs. Here's the details. The Inflation Reduction Act is equipped with two different rebates and a tax reduction for homeowners that get energy-efficient home upgrades. The Inflation Reduction Act was signed by President Biden in August 2022. The bill was meant to help lower costs for families while addressing climate, health care, and taxes. The bill outlines several ways millions of Americans can benefit and see a return on energy-saving steps. The White House has said families who take advantage of the clean energy and electric vehicle tax credits will save more than $1,000 per year. Other savings include $14,000 in direct consumer rebates for families to buy heat pumps or other energy efficient home appliances. 7.5 million more families will be able to install solar on their roofs with a 30% tax credit, saving families $9,000 over the life of a system or at least $30, $300 per year. Actually seen in the comment section, some states saying that you could do it for free where the cost, I, I don't know all the details on this because I don't have it, uh, but you can somehow do it where you pay $0 a month with the tax rebates and savings. You'd have to look into that, but some people were commenting that in the comment section. Also up to $7,500 in tax credits for new electric vehicles and $4,000 for used electric vehicles. Uh, I covered this in a previous video. They are starting to make cheaper and cheaper, more affordable electric vehicles like the Chevy Bolt EV here. Uh, this car starts at $26,000 and you can uh, get them for... It was a payment or a lease for as low as $219 a month. And um, it has 250 mile range, as you can see here. And I did another video where we compared the cost of electric charging versus gas to charge a car that would go, if you drove about 1,200 miles per month, would be about $59 per month where driving it was it was like around $160 per month to fill up your gas tank. Full disclaimer, I don't have an electric vehicle or solar panels. So, you know, I mean, just for, for reference. However, the one catch is these funds will likely be unavailable until 2023. So there's also a second rebate worth up to $8,000 that supports only homes that had recent installations that cut energy costs. So if you did anything like this to your home, you might be able to get a tax rebate worth up to $8,000 when you do your taxes. So you might get $8,000 back on your taxes. So look into that. Quote, a low-income household could receive $14,000 for energy electrification retrofits in their house, which is another thing. This means that money puts the upgrade, that the money puts the upgrades within reach of even the lowest income households, which the U.S. government sees as a positive sign. They could use the money to install electrical wiring, insulation, and even heat pumps. And you will save homeowners money in the long run, and their electric bills will be lower. There's also a 30% tax credit for installing solar panels, energy efficient doors, appliances, and windows. So if you're planning on doing any type of stuff like that at all, 
look into the details because you might save some money or may even qualify for getting some of this stuff free or significantly discounted. So uh, don't say I didn't at least uh, tell you about it. So um, you could save some significant money there as well. So I'll let you, I'll keep you up to date here on a lot of different things going on here in our country on a daily basis. We have millions of people that are getting checks in September um, because there's like 31 different states right now that are passing stimulus checks, tax reductions, uh, property tax rebates, and even more. I'll link you to that video here in just a moment. Make sure to subscribe down below and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos. Remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube channel. It's completely free to subscribe, and I'll keep you up to date here. You can click here to see that video that I just told you about. It's a very good video, so click on that video next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.